Okay, so I introduced the concept of space-time in the last video, and now I just want to go over and formalise everything that we're going to be using going forward. So I just want to begin by kind of making a quick comment about something I said in the last video. Essentially I said that when we move from classical mechanics to special relativity, that move is in generalising to space-time. Well, that's actually not quite correct, in that we can actually do classical mechanics perfectly fine in a space-time, we just have to make sure that all of our observers use the same time coordinate. And so essentially any coordinate transformations are only going to affect space coordinates. All the observers are going to use the same time coordinate. And so we might as well pluck the time coordinate out of the space and just keep it universal. But obviously as we move to relativity we can see this is not going to be the case. And really the, the thing which makes this, or what causes this to happen is that the space-time we use in relativity actually has a different geometry to the space-time that we would be using in classical mechanics. So I'll say more about this shortly, but for now let's just formalise space-time. Okay, so I introduce you to the space-time of our universe that we live in in the last video. It's a four-dimensional space-time where we have one time dimension and one space dimension. So we usually like to express the dimensionality of our space-time as being one plus something, where essentially the d refers to the number of spatial dimensions and the one just refers to the time dimension. So in our universe we have three spatial dimensions and one time dimension. We have a four-dimensional space-time. So space-time is a manifold. I'm going to call it M. And now if you don't know what a manifold is, I would encourage you to check out my other videos, but we're just going to give a really, really rough and quick summary of what it is by giving the example of space-time. Essentially, a manifold is just a set. Well, that set is actually a topological space. Don't worry if you know, don't know what that means. It's just a, a raw set that has additional structure that allows us to essentially do maths on the set. But it's a abstract set of quantities that in no way correspond to any kind of thing quantitative, like a numerical value, it's just an abstract set of elements. What are the elements of space-time? Well, they're events. So this set M is a set of events. And now what is an event? Well, it's essentially specified by referring to some location where the event took place and then the time at which the event happened. So our underlying set or topological space is the set of events and now what we do is we, we, we view this set of events by introducing an observer or a reference frame and this is essentially just a coordinate function or a chart map for this manifold which, don't worry if you know, don't know completely what that means, but it's essentially just a map that we construct which takes the abstract elements of the topological space, which don't really have any concrete meaning, and it just essentially assigns to these abstract elements concrete real number values. So the re reference frame, or the observer, is going to be a map from the manifold into some copy of the real numbers and now are taken to the same dimensionality of the space-time. So, in our universe we have a four-dimensional manifold, or four-dimensional space-time. An observer is going to construct four, essentially four coordinate maps that are going to represent um, well, the four dimensions of the space-time. And we're going to see that one of these is going to be a time coordinate, and the other three are going to be space coordinates. So I'm going to kind of index this or label this by calling our map x. x is now just going to be a kind of general placeholder for a set of coordinates and to let us know which coordinate we're talking about I'm going to index them using a superscript index. So Again, if you haven't seen index notation before, don't worry, I've got other videos about tensors and stuff like that. But just briefly now, what this index means is there's four 
or yeah, so the index is going to run from, now this is a convention, we take our indices to start at zero, so it's going to run from zero up to d, essentially because it would run to d plus one, but because we're starting at zero, it just runs up to d. So essentially what we're going to have is this x mu, in the case of our four-dimensional space-time, is essentially the x naught object, and then we have the x one, two, and three objects. So we like to separate out these space and time coordinates, even though they are kind of intrinsically all part of the same object. We still like to distinguish between them and know which is which. So the x naught is just always by convention the time coordinate, and then the x one, two, three, and could be potentially more if we have a higher dimensional space time. These are representing our space coordinates. So another thing which I should probably say, which is quite sometimes useful notation, in the case that we're writing here, we have our one plus three, so this is our four, just because I'm choosing to look at our universe right now. We usually write this, instead of our four, we kind of emphasize its space-time nature by saying this R4, it's isomorphic to this other object, R1, 3, where now this 1 is referring to a time dimension, and then the 3 could be D, but it's our um, number of spatial dimensions. Okay, so the observer takes abstract events, it constructs coordinates on that abstract set of events, which is essentially it just kind of assigns real number values to this abstract set of events. So an observer is going to come up with some set of four tuples, which they use to represent the events in space-time. So if you've seen anything about manifolds, you know that all of these chart functions are, in essence, completely arbitrary. We can construct Essentially, I haven't specified this function, it could be anything. Any chart function you can write down that obviously satisfies the, the rules of being a chart function is a valid chart function. And so we could just as well consider another observer. Let's call it y. I'll call it y nu. This is another observer that's looking at the same underlying space-time, but they're going to construct a completely different set of coordinates. So these are two perfectly valid viewpoints, or sorry, these are two perfectly valid sets of coordinates. Both of these observers are looking at the same underlying space-time. They're just using essentially different numbers to represent the same underlying abstract topological event. And now, of course, these co coordinates have to agree, so we're going to have to have some kind of way to transform between uh, coordinate values, and now we should be really clear that these numbers are essentially, they are just arbitrary assignments of numbers essentially to something raw and more abstract, which is the set of events. These numbers don't mean anything apart from, well the only meaning that these numbers carry is that they are the numbers which are, which this observer is assigning to the space-time. Every other observer is going to assign their own set of numbers, and so they're going to potentially disagree about things like what time did this event happen? Well, x is going to say it happened at x naught, but then y is going to disagree and say it happened at y naught. These don't necessarily have to be the same number. And so the coordinate transformations that are going to give us the way to transform between them, I'll just give them their relativistic name, they're known as the Lorentz transformations. They are essentially just coordinate transformations they're going to give us a way to transform between different observers in different reference frames. Okay, so I've kind of already said a lot of this already, I just wanted to go over again, properly calling this space-time manifold and these chart functions. Okay, so just before I move on to world lines, I want to make just a quick comment now. So, for simplicity, I'm just going to consider a a 1 plus 1 dimensional space-time, because it's easy to draw. So 
So essentially this is just going to be a copy of R2. And now what I've drawn there is potentially the space-time manifold and now I'm just going to construct on top of this drawing uh, a reference frame. So I'm just going to say let this be its x coordinate, the x1 coordinate, and this be the x0 coordinate. We usually, well, we do always think of this x0 as being the time coordinate. And now what we need to do, essentially because space and time, they're what physicists would call a dimension full quantity, they have some sort of physical unit associated with them. We measure spatial distances in meters, and we measure time in seconds. In order to draw a picture like this using these two different scales, we're going to need to introduce some kind of extra quantity which is essentially going to match up our units. So if I, if I were just now to kind of naively draw and say, okay, well, this is going to be my space dimension, I'm going to measure it in meters, and then x naught, well, I'm just going to call this for now t, it's going to be our time coordinate, we're going to measure that in seconds. So we need to introduce some kind of extra, it's going to be essentially just some kind of scaling constant so that we can essentially draw this Cartesian picture and have our units match up on each axis. So what we need to do is we're, we can't say this is going to be t in seconds, we have to instead say that it's going to be now some constant which I'm going to call c multiplied by t in seconds and now this is this constant we have to choose such that overall after the after um, such that essentially this x0 coordinate can also be measured in meters so that we can draw a picture like this and have it be accurate with the different units so this c which I've introduced we are going to see is going to correspond to the speed of light I don't want to go anywhere near talking about it in those terms right now. It's just a constant right now that we need to introduce to fix up our units. So time being measured in units of seconds and space being measured in units of meters. Sometimes you might have seen these square brackets just to kind of denote the dimension for quantities. We need to simply just say, well, we want our x0 units to be meters. So what, what do we have to do to achieve that? Well, we essentially need to take our time unit, which is seconds, and then multiply it by some constant, which is going to have units of meters to so the inverse seconds. So... Obviously, this c is going to correspond to a speed. As I said, it's the speed of light. But for now, we're not going to realise it as being the speed of light. We're just going to call it a constant. It can be whatever we want to set it to be. So we can actually choose this constant to be anything we like by actually changing our measurement scale. So if we instead decided to not measure distances in metres, we say, decided to measure distances in something called light seconds. I'm not going to tell you what that is for now. But if we measure our times in seconds and our distances in light seconds, then we can just not have to worry about this scaling factor and C is essentially just going to become 1. And that's going to be useful for us in the future when we don't want to have to deal with carrying around this extra constant. We just set it to 1 by choosing an appropriate length scale for our um, space and time distances but in order to not have to make that distinction now we're just going to include the constant that's going to fix up any differences between the units that we're using. Okay so I'll just quickly summarize we have to measure our distances in some kind of distance measure which is meters or kilometers or whatever and times they come in completely other units, their seconds or whatever other time unit you could define, we have no way of 
matching up these two scales. So in order to make sure that when we draw a picture like this, the picture is accurate and that we're drawing distances proportional to each other, we have to introduce some kind of constant so that we're measuring both axes in the same set of units. And this is just a, a dimension full constant. It has units itself, which fix up and make our overall set of coordinates all measured in. Essentially, we're all measuring now space distances and time distances in metres. Okay, so I'm going to talk a lot more about what C actually is and where it, um, and the role it plays in relativity a lot more later. I just needed to introduce it now. And now this is a convention that we always take, that the x naught coordinate, we usually write it, or we usually like to just write our coordinates now as ct and then the x, y, and z coordinates. These are the coordinates that an observer has constructed on our space-time, and they're just the number values that they use to represent the events in space-time.